round four saw the American Le Mans series arrive for the first of two races in Canada. And starting from pole, the number one Audi R8 of Marco Werner charged into the lead on the short and tight Trois Rivières street circuit, followed closely by JJ Leto in the champion Audi and Butch Leisinger in the Dyson 675 car. But the race had hardly yet got rolling when there were problems for the second Dyson car of Andy Wallace that spelt the end of the race already. In the GTS class, the Corvettes were trying to find a way past the Ferrari 550 Marinellos, but it was proving to be difficult. It was the dueling Job cars in the GT class as the teammates once again took on each other, whilst John Field was working his way up the order after starting from the back of the grid in his rental car. David Brabham ran out of brakes at turn six and dropped the Ferrari down the GTS rankings. And there'd hardly been time for the Dyson team to recover from the first retirement when Lady Luck ran out completely and out went the 16 car as well. It was business as usual though for the number one crew who were leading and changing over to Frank Bieler for the remainder of the race still being chased by the champion Audi who were about to let Johnny Herbert loose but it would be a difficult task with Herbert rejoining the race a lap behind the race leaders and having to fight his way past. But with time running out, there would be little chance to try and close down the deficit on the German pair, who despite having a few problems with the car due to an earlier incident, pretty much then had a clean run to the finish line. The first over-the-border rounds completed, and now the series stays in Canada, but moves towards Toronto now and the most sports circuit. After that, it's back to the USA for the final rounds of the year, culminating with the Petit Le Mans. The most bought circuit is a true racer's circuit and always attracts a good turnout of fans. And this year is no exception, and it's set to be a great race with the 675 cars back on top of the grid again, followed by the two Audis. The four Corvette taking GTS class pole and the 24 Alex Joe Porsche coming good again in the GT class. So, good grid ready for the two hour 45 race. Here at most sports, it's a great circuit. It requires everything from man and car. Everything has to be pretty much perfect. And as you can see, everywhere is packed with spectators. A couple of Canadian drivers as well in the field, which of course will uh, command certain attention. But problems for the number 20 car after crashing out in practice. They didn't get it repaired in time to join the start grid, so they'll have to start from the pit lane. And it should have been alongside the 16 car there. Uh, on the front row of the grid, so that's good news for the Audis as we get to the green flag now, over the chequered flag, and it is Weaver versus JJ Leto, who started uh, from third place in qualifying, but of course second essentially now on the start of this grid. Oh, that must have been a little touch there between JJ Leto, who charges uh, on the, the opening laps of these races, always just goes for it, but James Weaver has got away. And JJ Leto trying to stay with him. Behind Leto is Frank Bieler in the Infineon Yearst Audi R8. And then back from that, uh, Scott Maxwell in the Paynos car. The Paynos doing pretty well here, it's suited to this circuit, a little better than some of the others. And those Paynos cars being strong, but at the moment it's 675 versus 900. There is a weight difference, and the 675 car 
That Dyson car has been dynamite this year with that MG engine that really has been put in the wind up the Audis. There's John Field. And then the first of the call, that's Andy Pilgrim leading the GTS class. Clint Field there. And then the GT class with the Alex Job cars. And then the Ferrari 360 Moderners. But uh, John Field had moved up quite a few places. Look to see if we see where the 20 car is. We don't see it yet, but we look at the 88 car, the Pro Drive. Uh, Ferrari 550 Marinello that have been so strong this year. And there's the 20 car. A lot of work ahead of Chris Dyson. Of course, uh, a standing start for him from the pit lane, not a rolling one. So has a lot of time to catch up. And, of course, the field still some way ahead of him. Uh, and he's got his work cut out this afternoon, but on his way he goes. As we look now at the race leader, this is James Weaver. The familiar black and white helmet ahead of J.J. Leto. His opening charge hasn't amounted to anything now. He's just settled back in that second place. And wait and see what happens. There is a long way to go, as always, in this race. And we're on board now with the number 16 car, the Dyson MG. Round this long, sweeping turn. And here's a replay. That was uh, the start of the race when we saw J.J. Leto get very close to the James Weaver car. On board now with JJ Leto. Here's a replay out the final turn. You see, he's coming alongside and it doesn't quite happen. It's to break hard and we've seen fighting that car and how much experience went into holding that car. That was quite an achievement. But it uh, kept the order the way it is. 16 leading the race overall and the 675 class. Second place, JJ Leto in the customer champion Audi, the number 38 car, which is leading the 900 prototype class, but second overall in the race. And James Weaver is threatening to run away with us behind JJ Leto. Frank Beeler driving the opening stint in the number one Audi. And the Infineon Years team have won here three times. Uh, last year, Tom Christensen and Dindo Capello won the race. Oh, it was Frank Beeler that uh, set the qualifying uh, time last year. There's number 11. That's the Paynos uh, that uh, out-qualified their teammates. But uh, Gunnar Jeanette and Scott Maxwell, the Canadian, uh, pairing up for this race here. Over the line they go. One lap completed as we look back. There's the number 10 car and John Field uh, behind them there. So it's got Maxwell in the 11 car and it's David Salins that's uh, in the 10 car at the minute. I've uh, seen some good drives from him in the last couple of races and John Field is uh, sixth place overall now we make it. So he's done a lot of work to cut through. Uh, still in the car that they've leased from uh, Hugh Chamberlain after their car was destroyed at the Infineon Raceway, uh, what is now two rounds ago. And went to a lot of trouble to get it in time for the last race in Canada at Trois Rivières. But meanwhile, we're back with Painos and Belgium, David Salens, who will hand over later to former GTS champion Olivia Beretta as we now go on board third place in the GT class. This is Mark Lieb ahead of him. He's got the first and second in the GT class, which uh, uh, not unusually is Jörg Bergmeister and Lucas Law. And uh, aerial shot now looking down at some of the cars in the GT class. And just behind them uh, coming up, we should see sight of uh, number 16, James Weaver, who's about to catch these on the road. But they're having their own race. There's Weaver now. And just look how smoothly... The difference in speed of that class lets him through. On board now, third place we are in the Corvette C5R of Ron Fellows. Third in class, uh, partnered with Johnny O'Connell, and this is the home race for Ron Fellows. He dearly wants to win this. He was so disappointed uh, to uh, lose out on the class win at Trois Rivières, and he wants this today. He wants it always, and uh, it's about an hour drive from his home this was a circuit he made his first ever racing debut at when he was nine years old. And at the moment, he's behind Jan Magnussen in the number 80 a Pro Drive Ferrari. And Jan Magnussen and David Brabham joining forces again. They drove for Paynols last year, but they're back together. But inside 
The Ferrari 550 Marinello now just going slightly wider there, run just a little bit tighter, knows this circuit very well, but these cars have proved to be pretty evenly matched this year. Well, the second car started uh, from the back of the field, uh, the second Pro Drive car. As we go on board with JJ Leto, second place. And again, we see how the G-forces and the braking momentum just push him down into the cockpit as we go back to the GTs. And on board with Mark Lieb as he gets passed by one of the Paynell's cars. But Mark Lieb, no slouch, another Porsche uh, expert. Raced alongside uh, York Bergmeister and Lucas Law and the rest of the crew as uh, the number 12 car is smoking problems for the number 12 car. Tommy Drizzy in the American Suites 900 car has got problems and slowing visibly, trying to keep out the way of the others. Uh, meanwhile, traffic for the race leader, that's the number 20 car uh, that we see now just uh, behind the champion Audi in second place, makes his way past. The Conrad Motorsport Celine, the yellow car you see. We haven't seen much of them in the American Le Mans series this year. But through goes JJ Leto. Uses the speed of the Audi just to get past through. And a cloud of smoke from that 12 car that's uh, ahead now. JJ Leto, we're looking on board the rear of the 12 car as JJ gets past very quickly. And so through goes Chris Dyson as well. And we'll see the 12 car of into the pit lane as he does now. Uh, and that looks pretty uh, pretty terminal, I think, as we look back again from him as he slowly makes his way up the pit lane. So the pit crew just saying they're going to fuel that car first, then take the covers off and have a look and see what the problem is. Could just be something they can cure fairly quickly. Uh, that's an awesome shot of James Weaver in the 675-16 car, race leader, leader of the 675 class as well. And pit crew just giving him the time difference that he has, so just less than uh, three quarters of a second as he comes up behind the GT car. Passes him, and he's going to have to do that a lot more times before the end of this race. Well, not looking good at all for the number 12 car as the crew uh, push him. Oh, uh, the 66 car not looking good either because he's uh, impacted there. They can turn four. That's Court Wagner, who's in the races group Porsche 911. GT3 RS, oh, a big damage to the front right-hand side of that. That, I don't think, is going anywhere. The tyre has come off. There it is. And, uh, all sorts of fluid spilling out. Here's a replay then. So there he goes, just gets it into a spin, loses it on uh, the entry to that uh, turn four and hits those tyres. And uh, that is the end of that race. So we're on full course yellow, I would imagine, now. So we're going to see cars heading towards the pit stops. Well, court is perfectly okay. The marshal is just there. In comes JJ Leto. Now the pit lane has opened. So no sign of Johnny. So this is just going to be fuel. They've got tyres ready. Are they going to change them? So the team just talking to JJ all the time. While he's in the pits, just waiting. The fuel's in. And tyres are being changed. They're going to change them this time. Taking the gamble on doing it now. Behind is uh, Ron Fellows, who was leading. He was up to the lead of the uh, GTS class, but Jan Magnussen now takes that. So the Audi is completed and heads out of the pits. James Weaver has not pitted. On board with JJ then. Just has to keep it down to 60 kilometers. So... Off he goes. And joins the circuit again. And now has to pick up the rest of the uh, field. And there is the pace car. The lights are out. So that car will be coming in at the end of this lap and will be go again. James Weaver leading the zero car. We saw there the uh, olive green Ferrari as we go on board. And 
that looks like uh, one of the Painos cars, I think. Well, it could be... Uh, yes, I think it's a Painos. And there's... Uh, Olive Green Ferraris, they get the green flag, and that car was virtually destroyed. And uh, at the end of the qualifying session, they've rebuilt it as JJ Leto on board with him as he starts passing the traffic now to work his way back up. Of course, with having the pit stop, a lot of work from the Olive Green crew. Through he goes, just dives through on the right hand side, on the inside there. Got a 360 Modena that he passes now. Just just glances in his mirror as he goes through. And another stream of six or seven cars ahead of him. That's the Dodge Viper that he's up behind now. Through, and then there's a Painos. Gets past that without a problem. Um, all the time, these cars are in four classes, circulating in their own race, and overall as well, has to stand on the brakes there as uh, he came up quickly behind the back of that uh, Porsche, and now he's got the number four Corvette of uh, Oliver Gavin. Gets past that without a problem. Big difference in speed, and this is a long run with some sweeping little rises on it that's quite awesome when you can stand by the side of the track and watch them. Uh, and the fastest part of the circuit, and then hard on the brakes for this turn as they make their way up towards a couple more turns that then leads them to the end of the lap. The Ferrari ahead through without a problem there. And really just having to work all the time. There is a bit more space on this than the likes of what we saw at Trois Riviere. But uh, the champion Audi continuing on as he has to do. 550 or so horsepower available to him as he boots his way through the traffic and past the GT cars. And there is the race leader, James Weaver, not pitted yet. We saw JJ take advantage of that early stop to fuel and uh, replace the tyres. So he's on fresh rubber. He's got a full fuel load. But uh, we'll wait and see what happens with James Weaver leading the 675 class, leading overall. And we just caught a glimpse of John Field. There he is now in the Intersport car, uh, second in 675. And... Uh, Going well. Oh, and that's a problem. That's a Corvette. And it's the number four Corvette that's got off big style. Oliver Gavin has hit that wall very hard indeed at turn four. And um, that's going to be another full course yellow. Uh, a lot of damage done to the tyre wall, so we're going to be out for quite some time, I think, under caution. Safety car on the track. And uh, disappointment. Oliver Gavin, that's... Uh, that's a strange mistake for her to, to see him make as the olive green Ferrari comes into the pits. Emmanuel Naspetti inside that car. This is for fuel. And uh, Emmanuel staying inside. The tyres are being readied as well. Uh, the team from Tuscany, from San Gimiano, who finished that car literally days. Well, that car's finished. Uh, literally days before the first round at Sebring as the number four Corvette gets taken away. So that will move the uh, olive green Ferrari up a place. And uh, disappointment for the number four car then that uh, won at Trois Riviere and into the pits. That's Duncan Dayton. Uh, changed over from... Uh, there's problems for that car. Changed over from John Field, but there is problems for that car. Uh, they had a couple at Trois Rivières. We get a driver's view inside the helmet. Board in the panels. Distinctive engine note. Panels ahead as well with that distinctive offset rear wing. And in the pits is the race leader, then. John Field and Duncan Dayton's car still in the pits with problems. James Weaver in, and he's out of the car as well. So it's going to be a changeover to Butch Leitzinger, who's there now. And uh, in he gets. James Weaver will help him in whilst the crew refuel that car. The IMSA marshals, officials looking on. The car just lurches forward there. And uh, now they get to work on putting the wheels in. Which lighting is still getting himself into that car. Plugs the radio in now. James Weaver able to help him. Front tyres going on as we look at Duncan Dayton in the Intersport car and a lot of time. Okay, come on, 
Okay, car down then. Being talked through it. Taking a long time for that car to get going again. Tense moments for the Dyson team there, but that car finally fires up. John Field's car still in the background. Duncan Dayton inside, though. Um, problems for them. Just checks that the wheels are on correctly by just moving it from side to side and now picks up the power. And still, they can't get that car going. So it looks like the pit crew are going to try and push start him and I can't quite remember the regulations as to how that happens, how that affects them. Their main concern is just to get it going at the moment. The further down they go and your heart goes out to that team that have endured so much. It's some sort of problem for them. So they try to bump start that car and it looks to be underway now it is. Slowly down to the end of the pit lane and gets stopped now by. Has that car got no? It's still going. Thought for a minute that uh, that car had lost its power, but out goes Duncan Dayton finally after a long, long time in the pit lane and all that work they did earlier on has been lost now. So time to play catch up as he moves back out onto the track again and. Starts to weave, bring the tyres up to temperature. Of course, still under caution, comes up behind one of the uh, Dyson cars. But has a lot, a lost, lost a lot of track position as we're back on board with Mark Lee in the 43 Orbit Racing Porsche. And, oh, there's a 37 car coming to a standstill at uh, the side of the road. So just by turn five, I think that is Duncan Dayton has run out of car. What a shame and a disappointment for them. Beautiful sunshine and a nice cooling breeze, just keeping the temperatures down a little bit as the safety car pulls off. And uh, away we go then, the continuation of this race at Mossport. Race leader is the number one car still, as they all jumbled up now. Uh, well, not say the number one car still. That's the way it uh, works out after the pit stops now. Of course, James Weaver handing over to Butch Leitzinger. They were further back down the order. And Frank Beeler still inside that car. There's the number 10 car, the Paynos car. David Salen's behind the wheel. On board with him. And that is a true impression of how they're jostled around in the car and just imagine what your eyes are doing with being jostled around like that and it does give you some impression of, again of this awesome long back straight there that's him taking off a tear off just to improve his visibility picked up a few flies and a bit of dirt just had the time to do it before he had to break and go into this turn oh, this area just crammed with spectators and their camper vans and making a real weekend of it the canadians true race supporters and there is the champion audi on board with jj leto staying in that car behind the painters looking for a way through but uh, it's not being made easy for him david sainz is putting up a fight to jj tries to do it there but the door is shut again and just on the curb goes Salins, and that could just be enough to let JJ through. Still in third place, though, JJ Leto not able to get past that Panos in the 900 class. Of course, they are racing together in that class. And cutting through, oh, he's done it this time. Just used the traffic, got unsighted by the uh, Orbit Porsche. And JJ Leto pounced in a moment, and now he's on his way again. Been held up and carves his way through. Much faster car than the Paynos. Paynos was doing an excellent job of holding him up. And it was through the Ferrari, then quick dab on the brakes, and Butch Leitinger in the pits. So problems for that car. 
And we're told they're changing the battery. So power problems, electrical problems for the 16 car, and that is going to make a serious time deficit for them. Go ahead. If you turn the power steering off, is it undrivable? Crew talking to him, that ba battery being put in now. It's pretty heavy, Steve. Okay, so that's, that's probably one of the biggest uh, draws in. Just talking and trying to find ways of saving power, whatever the problem is. Uh, it could be an alternator problem or something, but talking about turning the power steering system off to try and save some juice, but uh, uh, it didn't look like Butch was very keen on that. Meantime, there is the number one car. Uh, that has been passed by the 38 champion Audi whilst we were in the pits with the uh, number 16 car and there is damage to the rear of that uh, number one car and the report is that that was done at the restart of the race uh, when it, uh, there was a, a slight collision with the number 10 Paynos car so that was at the restart now it's not a whole host of bodywork see if we get a good look it's not a whole host bodywork that's been affected but it is enough to affect the handling of that car in the pit still is the 16 car still trying to get that out and uh, time is being lost hand over fist and it just looks so good at the start of this race for uh, the Dyson team and now severe problems so while we were drawn on that uh, the champion car has been released The indicator light on the side of that number one car still shows he's leading in the class, but that will change when he comes through uh, the pits next time round. Panels behind him, though. But uh, we will see whether that problem, uh, that bodywork, is going to uh, get any worse or not. It will affect the aerodynamics at the back, because uh, obviously any changes to the, the, the splitter or the under trays on these cars, or, or virtually any part of the cars, does make a difference they're so finely tuned and here uh, where aerodynamics is very important you're talking about uh, high speeds as the 23 car comes into pits and there's a problem with the 23 car as well and uh, one of the uh, wheel nuts the uh, left rear wheel the uh, lug has stripped so that's taken a bit of time to sort that out so uh, Lucas Law changed over to Sasha Massner, who heads out now, but has lost the lead to Jörg Bergmeister in the 24 car. Uh, the Alex Job team uh, busy amongst themselves, but still first and second in the GT class. The GT class comprising of the Porsches and also the 360 Ferrari Moderners as well, as we're back with JJ Leto leading this race in the customer champion Audi that he's pairing with this year with Johnny Herbert and there's Frank Beeler second in class in the number one car we didn't see the move that uh, JJ put on him but nonetheless it happened and that number one Audi not looking perfectly re perfectly happy on on this circuit today and Butch Leitzinger still in the pits but he's got the car going and out he goes now and time will tell whether they have cured uh, the problem, but if there is a power drain there, uh, then there's very little they can do about it. So slowly out he goes, hits the white line, and now how is his way back up towards uh, the circuit and up towards racing speed? Of course, he will be very shortly, but got to get those tyres uh, up to temperature first as JJ goes through and passes the pain odds. Stuck in a whole host of traffic now and caught up amongst each other uh, was the number one car and the, the Audi car of uh, the champion team as well. We're on board with JJ Leto and it just happens where they just get bunched up uh, into the traffic and uh, it can change the whole nature of these races. Of course, incidents can happen out of that as well. But there is uh, JJ Leto ahead and passes the 900 car of Clint Field who is son of uh, John Field from the Intersport team who races the 675 that we saw Duncan Dayton retiring before and 
and uh, JJ though out in the lead. I'm not sure whether he had to, uh, whether he was passed and repassed the uh, number one car before, but we saw the 20 car go through there, and there is the number 88 car of Thomas Enger. And alongside the olive car, the olive green car, as the 20 car comes through, we're on board inside this car now. Ferrari 550 Maranello that has been prepared by ProDrive in Banbury, Oxfordshire in England who also look after the Subaru or Rally team and Dave Richards, the ProDrive Supremo behind uh, British American Racing in the Formula One World Championship as well so a motorsport company through and through and also do a lot of work on the, some of the 360 Moderners as well in the uh, FIA GT class Sounding sweet so far, and there it is from the outside. Uh, the two Ferraris together, the 80 car first of all, and then uh, Thomas Enger, who was blistering again in qualifying. And that olive green Ferrari has been rebuilt by the Raffinelli team. We were talking about before it has an Elan engine in it it's not a true Ferrari engine although it does have the Ferrari head on it as Butch Leitzinger moves out to pass the uh, green Ferrari and the green comes from the Italian flag it's not a standard Ferrari color at all although we understand that Ferrari have actually been asked to supply customer cars in that uh, color several times there's the champion Audi as Frank Beeler comes through to pass the number zero car. And there he goes, Marco Werner will be taking over from him a little bit later on. Marco drove uh, brilliantly at uh, trois Rivieres as we look at the Alex Job car being passed by the GTS Pro Drive Ferrari. Distinguishable amongst each other, both the uh, GT cars and the GTS cars, by the different coloured stripes on the windshield. Uh, you see the yellow one on the 24 car, where there's a red one on the 23 car. Both class leaders, both in different parts of the race at the moment, and continuing on in their own way. Round they go through the start-finish line, alongside the pit lane, and JJ Passing the 24 car, as through round comes the 16 car. Uh, fingers crossed for that team that uh, whatever problem they have will uh, not stop them anymore. And they can continue onwards. As through goes the number 35 car of Ralph Kellners, who's currently, uh, we have it second in the uh, GTS class, and the other. Uh, 360 modern you could see just behind in that shot the yellow and red car the 28 car the JMB Racing USA Ferrari 360 modern uh, also in the GT class we have in third place at the moment Raj Alexander inside the 28 car as we stay there with Ralph Kellners who had a good outing at Trois Rivieres as well and the Ritzy Competizioni 360 it's going well today. They've made good strides with that car this year and certainly seems to be a little bit more competitive. And just has one Porsche. Oh, that Porsche is a little bit destroyed. That's David Shep, and that's at turn one. So the Cycle Motorsport uh, Porsche 911 has come to a stop. Uh, still has power. Looks as if he's trying to start that car. Uh, but can he get it going? Quite a bit of debris on that turn, but he, well, he's under, he's under power. And either he's, well, here's a replay then, we'll just see him just go wide, just drifts wide and uh, through the gravel trap. And debris bounding there, but we'll see him on the track that we do now. And uh, damage to the front left-hand side of that car, let's have a look. Wheel seems to be turning okay, a lot of bodywork missing, but I'm sure we'll see him uh, heading into the pits uh, pretty shortly as we join JJ Leto. No problems for him. Uh, would have, of course, been aware that a car had gone off. They would have been ready for a possible 
A yellow flag situation as Jeff Bucknam uh, is in the pits now. Not out of that car yet. Oh, that's one of the team members that's uh, standing in the car, I think, at the minute. Yes, and Brian Woolman the side just waiting to uh, get into that uh, pill beam. And here's a replay. This is Chris Dyson. Just getting a little spin there as the distance to that corner ran out very quickly indeed. Uh, shakes his head at a moment. Uh, heart stopping moment for him, but he continues on. And that's the sort of thing they don't need at all as we look at him now. So he just gets uh, composed and get back up to speed. He'll soon forget about that and get his confidence back. And uh, quickly establish that uh, that car is perfectly okay. On he goes, but of course, reminder, they started from pit lane and they have moved a long, long way up uh, from the start of this race. Mixed in with the 900s and the GTs there. Under full course yellow again at most sport, and that's the reason why the 28 car, who was third in the GT class, has gone off at turn one and has stopped in that gravel. Well, got it wide and got it into the gravel here we see it uh, didn't make a collision with the, uh, the tire wall luckily of any severity but it's enough to stop that car uh, it is stuck so that's going to have to be recovered out of the gravel as into the pits comes JJ Leto uh, what we're going to see here yes it's it's a full pit stop Johnny Herbert over the wall and climbs in from the left hand side of that car JJ helps him as Johnny kicks his head and the fuel going in, the tyres are readied. And that is a full pit stop then. And possibly the final pit stop of the race for the number 38 car. And we wait to see what's happening with the other car because we believe the number one car is in the pits as well. Tyres now being changed. It's done in seconds really look how busy the pit lane is there are cars everywhere in that pit lane it's just falling oh and the Alex Job car being pushed out of the way but there's the number one car passing the 38 car in the pit lane Marco Werner inside that car now and has taken essentially the race lead there's the champion Audi Johnny Herbert inside now lights on powers up and Audi goes in what will be second place I think so pit work from the number one team have helped them jump the champion Audi as out comes Johnny on to turn his first race mile here in 2003. Away he goes, but they've lost a little bit of time there. And yet again, Johnny Herbert is getting into the race and having to do some chasing. That's what we've seen him do uh, several times now in the last few rounds. And can he do it this time? Can he make up the difference and get past without time running out? And in the pits is the 16 car. And Butch Leitzinger, out he goes. And awful lot of time they've lost. Were leaders, of course, overall and in the 675 class. And now we're underway again as the Panos gets the green flag. Away we go. And there's Marco Werner instantly on the charge. That is the PK Porsche, the 61 car, and slots in. And uh, now, after passing the Celine, the Conrad Celine, there's Johnny Herbert. Um, he'll pass this car very quickly as they come out of this turn, and will be onwards then to try and catch that number one car, which is ahead of him there, dead ahead of him now. And he can see the target. He can see how much time he's got to make up and he will be going for it no holes barred driving now from the former jaguar formula one driver uh, he left formula one after driving for jaguar and now enjoying himself in the american le mans series still lives in monaco and partnered up with jj this year there's the 675 car ahead of him, but it is that silver Audi that he wants to be up behind and preferably getting in front of. And can he do it? The gauntlet has been dropped once again for him. And 
what can he do in that champion Audi? Well, there's two cars ahead of him. The 675 in the uh, panels is not going to be all that easy for him to pass. And Marco Werner, very much aware of his position in this race, very much aware of Johnny Herbert. And all the time we'll be getting information and talk back from the team. They'll let him know exactly what's happening as we leave that battle now and go down into the GTS class as we're on board inside the Corvette. Again, fast enough to pass the Porsches. 675 car, I think, ahead of him there as Ron Fellows leads this race, and that's exactly where he wanted to be for the driving of the final stint with Johnny O'Connell as we go inside the Pro Drive Ferrari. Uh, this is number 18. This is David Brabham, second in the GTS class at the moment. Yeah, Magnussen did the opening stint. David uh, driving the final part of the race. And they were going well at Trois Rivières until they had problems with uh, the long brake pedal. Just not enough pressure on it. As we look at Timo Bernhard, number 24, and the Alex J. Porsche leading the GT class. As through comes Andy Wallace, who's now taken over from Chris Dyson and leading the 675 class after starting from pit lane and that car that was very heavily damaged at the uh, end of the warm-up session that they've now got back in one piece and got into leading their class as well, which is good news for them. As we look once more, we'll continue to stay with the 24 car. Uh, one of the Ferraris right behind him and will be carving away past very shortly as carving over the grass at spin two is Mark Newhouse, who spins it yet again. And uh, that's it, turn two. The Conrad Motorsport Celine S7R in the GTS class uh, gets back on track. And oh, that was so close indeed. As David Brabham, I'm sure momentarily would have blinked his eyes at that, but got through. And superior handling of that Ferrari just let him cut in a little bit tighter, and no doubt. A very strong dab of the brakes as now Johnny Herbert on the back of the Infineon Audi. Won twice already this year. Johnny Herbert has a win to uh, the champion credit as well and wants it here. So now he's got to uh, get a bit closer. He's got to get a lot closer than this and keep his way through the traffic. And it's the traffic really that, that's going to make the difference here. Marco Werner. Loses a bit of ground there as he comes up behind the Ferrari. That gives Johnny time to make it up. Werner's going to get through first. Johnny's probably not going to be able to follow him. Werner doesn't get through. He's blocked again. Good news for Johnny who tries to look on the inside. And that was a touch there with Werner. Uh, or a very, very a jinked manoeuvre from Werner just to control that car. And those two really are fighting for it. As we come back to 24, the GT leader... And the Alex Joe pairing of Timo Bernhard and Jörg Bergmeister are on. Fingers crossed for a win in the GT class. It's gone wrong for the 23 crew. But as long as the team gets it, that's all the four drivers really uh, work for. Yes, they like to have their own car winning, but uh, a lot of teamwork goes on between these uh, two cars as he pulls out and passes the... 360-29 car and a stop and go penalty now for the 16 car who was spending more time in the pits today than out on the track and oh and a spinner there as well and this could change the race again this could change the race as alongside the tires goes the 67 car that's at turn one and the report is that he's made contact with the 38 car and Johnny Herbert has got a problem with one of the front wheels, well, it must be the front right-hand side wheel because the left-hand side is OK and has come into the pits now. The team are over the wall. Well, the front bodywork come up and that tyre has just dropped. There's problems. There's severe problems for that uh, Audi. And it's broken suspension. Look at the angle. The team are pointing to it now. Heat from the carbon discs. And... Disaster for Johnny Herbert and the champion team. What can they do to get that car out? Frantic activity in the pits. They've got a new wishbone. But second place has 
definitely gone. And there is Olivia Bretta, the number 10 car, the Painos car, that he's taken over from David Salins in. And how is this going to affect him then? Because now he's up to second place in the Painos. They're up to second place unbelievably. And on for another podium position. They finished on the podium at uh, Trois Rivières as we go back to Marco Werner, the race leader, who all of a sudden has a, a quite huge lead in this race. And uh, of course, the champion Audi has gone. The Painos is quite some way behind. So he can. Oh, and Olivia Beretta has gone off into the tyres. And what is going on in this race? That's at turn five. And a lot of damage to the front of that Painos. The split has gone. Ah, uh, the wheel's still there and seems to be turning okay. But Olivia Beretta has gone off after getting into second place. Uh, now the car's lining up behind him. Race leader was just there as well. So several laps down now is the 10 car, and he's going to have to pit for sure as we rejoin the GTS class. And this is the battle for the lead of GTS, the number three car. Ahead of the number 88 car, Johnny O'Connell leads Peter Cox. It is Chevrolet versus Ferrari. The white flag is out, though. One more lap to go. Marco Werner has got this in the bag. They are going to take the win here. And I think it's safe to say that now. The battle is on, though, in the dying stages for the GTS class. And these two are actually ahead of the race leader, so they're going to have one more lap to go at the end of this. And Johnny O'Connell uh, is making that car very wide indeed. He's got GTs ahead of him. He's got to get through quickly and not give uh, Peter Cox a chance to get past him. And this, of course, is Canadian honour as well, because Johnny O'Connell's teammate is Ron Fellows. He'll be watching this avidly at the side of the track, and Peter Cox has got his best chance yet. There's the race leader. Uh, he's on his last lap now, and these two are going to have to go through and battle it out for another one, because as they come round, the turns here, oh, just holds him off, holds him off again. Uh, the traffic is just not making life any easy. He's got a Porsche ahead of him now. So over the start-finish line they go. Johnny O'Connell flashes the headlights to just try and attract the attention of the drivers, but it's over for the race winners. And that makes the fourth consecutive win for the Audi team at Most Sport and the third overall win for Bieler and Werner this year. Andy Wallace and Chris Dyson were second overall and winners of the 675 class. It was a home win for Ron Fellows and Johnny O'Connell and Timo Bernhard and Jörg Bergmeister notched up the win in the GT class in the 24 car. Uh, at the beginning I was I was struggling a bit, I did have too much oversteer and the only thing I could try is uh, stay as close as possible. And um, then in the end we had this uh, full course yellow and again our pit crew did a perfect job yeah. because it was them bringing the car in front of the other car. And um, But then it was a tough part for, for Marco I guess, he had to stand the pressure of uh, Johnny. But he was able to do it, and uh, finally Johnny was running into a, in, in, into a problem. So a brilliant job from the team, from Marco, and I think we can, have, can be happy with this win. Well, the German pair are starting to run away with the 900 lead now. And Chris Dyson, it is, the tops John Field in the smaller 675 prototypes. The number three Corvette has 20 points over their GTS Corvette teammates whilst the fourth place finish for the Alex Job car of Sasha Masson and Lucas Law still keeps them ahead in the GT class. Well, next time, the American Le Mans series heads back to the States as the tour continues at Road America. Here we go.